One of the things we've got to realize is that at nighttime, when you look at a light that you can't really see any uh, diameter to it, you're just looking at a point source, it's very difficult to judge distance. For example, uh, as an amateur astronomer and, and someone who teaches astronomy, a lot of times I'll be out with my telescope or just looking at the sky and, and you see Venus and, or Mars or bright planets and at the same time you'll see another bright light that you know doesn't belong there. But if you watch it for a few minutes, especially uh, as close to Cleveland Hopkins as we are, you're going to see the thing start to move. Now that uh, light from the plane at most is a few tens of thousands of feet up and yet the distance to the planets is millions of miles. But, but looking at them in the nighttime sky, it's very, very difficult to judge distance. And of course, sometimes our brains sort of tell us that when we see something real bright, uh, we assume it's real close to us and therefore real big. So uh, I don't think that a lot of the people who claim to see UFOs, I don't think they're naturally trying to deceive anybody. Uh, but I think people do make mistakes. Uh, I know a lot of times just looking at this, that, and the other thing. I look at something and say, well, uh, you know, what's going on here? And then I look a little bit, and maybe it's a trick of the lighting. Uh, not necessarily talking about the sky, but just things. I remember one time I was walking down the street, and I saw a building that looked like it had, had burned, and, you know, smoke on the side of it, but it was just the way the sun was shining on it. So you've got to take that into account. And a lot of people in, in our uh, day and age, with all the lights we have at night, on, on street lights and so forth, they really aren't used to seeing what the sky looks like if you're out in the country with a lot of light. And so if you are in that situation and you see something that maybe you've never seen before, uh, it is going to be a little hard for you to interpret it, perhaps. Like I mentioned, it's an ego thing. We're, we think that we are that much further advanced than every, everybody else, everything else. So I, I don't, it's not a fear. It's a doubt, and I think one of the only ways that I, that could change is if something presented itself, and there was a documented story right in front of me, or some amazing event that happened that could be broadcast throughout the world to show that there is higher existence, and then I think there would be a, a sense of fear that could come along with having something like that thrown in your face. So it's it's possible, but you never like to think that, I guess. I think, in a way, it's kind of egotistical of us to think that, you know, we're the only ones that deserve life, we're the only ones that are living in this whole big entire universe, so. You know, just because of my own personal experiences, I believe it's extraterrestrial, because it's almost like a telepathic thing where, you know, I'd get a feeling like I needed to go down to a certain place, and, you know, when they do show up, it's crazy, because it's always directly right out in front of me. It's not like down there, or it's like, they show up where I am, so uh, I don't think it's government. I do think it is extraterrestrial. I don't think it's an alien thing. Be I would say probably because just of pretty much my man-based ego of being a human being. Like We don't like to think that there's anything higher than us out there. I've always believed that there's other beings out there. You know, that's just the way uh, ever since I saw the first one. I've always believed in it. I don't believe it was man-made. Oh, it wasn't man-made. Yeah, it's it's from another being. Yeah. Yeah. It. It definitely was. Uh, as far as life, other places in the universe, that's something that I discuss, of course, a lot in my astronomy classes. Uh, given the immensity of the universe, the number of stars that we have in recent years finding that a number of stars in our own Milky Way, in our own neighborhood, have planets. Uh, we can assume that a lot of those planets have life, but again, until we actually find that there is life there, we can't say that that's proof. Now, we can say the same thing for intelligence. Uh, if there's life on other worlds, I'm not saying that there, that there uh, is or, or there isn't. And I, you know, quite frankly, if you pin me down to the ground and, and force me to answer, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I, I really don't know. But uh, the same thing holds true with intelligence. You know, we know that given the conditions on our Earth, uh, you know, life developed here, and of course, still some uncertainties about how life originated, uh, and we ended up with intelligent life today. Uh, you and me here sitting talking about all this, but. 
you know, that doesn't prove that it happened someplace else, but by the same token, we can't prove it. So I'm open-minded about that. A lot of these UFOs have been spotted around Lake Erie or somewhere near it uh, with Nancy and Sandy's uh, witness accounts. They, they were spotted over the lake. These, when they last saw these craft, they, they took off over the lake and disappeared. And the same with Michael E. Hill, he, he, he videotaped these things over the lake. I mean, it just makes you wonder why these things are, do they have an interest in the lake and water? And I don't know, it makes you think. What I tell to anyone is, uh, first of all, just look up. You know, no one looks up anymore. You know, just take 15 minutes sometime, and when it's a nice clear night, just go out and look up. I mean, it's good for the soul. You know what I mean? Um, other than that, I could, uh, I would suggest, you know, looking into the subject yourself. You know, don't don't listen to what I have to say. Do your own research.